Andrew, let's kick off with you. Are you worried that trade tensions are certainly back on and actually can escalate? I think they are. I, look, I think this is, we've been in a period I think you could categorize as constructive ambiguity where on a number of different fronts, it's been unclear exactly which direction trade and the administration were gonna take. And because it wasn't quite clear, the markets could still imagine a better scenario or an ultimate amelioration. But I think we're reaching the point where these deadlines are coming up, whether it's steel tariffs, where it's NAFTA, where a decision is gonna have to be made either way. And I think that that is gonna create a, a more volatile backdrop for markets. Okay, what does that mean for world growth? Trade is an important component of world growth, but the, um, the tariffs that we've seen so far for a very small component of, of U.S. trade, the question is what the measures will be in retaliation, what will the EU do, what will China do, and also taking this in context of what's happening in overall global trade, this is not the first time that the U.S. is doing this. It happened with Japan, it happened with New Zealand already. The EU is the next in a list of countries that have seen that happen from the U.S. Andrew, how does it make a difference if, for example, the E retaliates in actually certain, uh, you know, constituencies or certain states where Donald Trump has more to lose in the midterm elections? I mean, do we always need to bring it back to domestic policy? Well, look, I think that's a very good point. I mean, uh, you know, my colleague is absolutely right. The absolute numbers involved here are quite small when it comes to GDP. The effect is more, I think, on market sentiment, on escalation, and whether or not what comes next are going to appear like more targeted um, uh, repercussions. And, and I I think that the EU has been clear, as well as both Mexico and Canada, that when they are going to look at potential measures to take in response to these tariffs, they, they are going to be thinking about segments of the economy that are politically important to, okay. to the U.S. Okay, so what, what kind of impact? I mean, again, first of all, how does China actually, do they really retaliate? Are we talking about a possibility denial of a trade war, or is it just trade tensions that will kind of, you know, flare up, but nothing too ugly? I think that the term trade war can be quite misleading, as Cecilia Melstrom, the EU Trade Commissioner, said uh, recently. It is more about what the measures will be in retaliation. The EU has taken the side of looking at the WTO first. Um, so there is a, a first point in the process. In terms of China, it fits into the broader context of how the, U, the relationships between Washington and Beijing are evolving, not only in the field of trade, but also of investment. Chinese investment abroad in the US and the EU has been growing very fast in the past years and now we see more rules in terms of screening for an investment into strategic industries in the US. It's also about how the multipolar world is coming together in terms of the US uh, now retreating from the global stage. We've seen, for example, the first all futures contract in renminbi, how the renminbi is rising as a trade and investment currency and how this vacuum that the US is leaving is being filled by China and the stronger relationship between China and Russia that we're seeing. Yeah. The US and the EU drifting apart in this context is is very worrying for the global economy. Andrew, what does it all mean for the markets? Well, look, I think it means that we're heading into a summer that is, I think, going to remain volatile, right? We have, I think, upcoming headlines on on, on steel tariffs. We have yeah. upcoming headlines on China trade negotiations. We have NAFTA. We have an uncertain political backdrop in, in Italy. We have a new government potentially in, in Spain. So I think this is all a lot for the market to digest. And um, you know, in the backdrop, you still have quite strong earnings growth. You still have a reasonably healthy level of global economic growth. But I think the number of kind of issues that are gonna be on the market's radar that can lead to volatility have definitely increased. And I think in our view, that warrants taking position down into the summer and having a more neutral risk position from an asset allocation perspective. But Andrew, at the same time, could you say markets have been complacent and they don't really know how to price in this, you know, they're focusing on fundamentals in the U.S. economy that actually leads to Fed hiking instead of really looking at this kind of trade tensions. Yeah, well, like, I think it's a fair question. I mean, in some ways, complacency is, is maybe an appropriate word, but also an, a loaded word. I think, I think markets have been struggling with the difficulty of reading a situation where there has been a lot of ambiguity and where it's not quite sure where the U.S. administration will go. When these first trade tariffs on China were proposed, yeah. there was a lot of uncertainty over whether the number was on the total amount involved or the actual amount of the fine um, up until almost the day it was announced. So, you know, look, I think markets are trying to do their best in, re in, in response to that. But I do think as the summer goes on, it's going to be harder to ignore that these are happening, that they will have an impact, and that the impacts will then have follow-on repercussions. Um, Danai, how much is this a concern for Germany? So Germany has a lot of exports. So we're seeing now the Trump administration look at cars as well. And that's kind of, it's only the beginning, but you could see potentially some tariffs on cars. And, and that means that the German economy probably has the most to lose. 
it is a concern for Germany as, as a big exporter within the EU. And also you have to bear in mind its, its voice does carry a big weight in terms of how the EU will respond to the U.S.